after the king, the outlaw king, the woman king. Seriously, what is it with producers and kings? Here's a free suggestion for the next one, the pasta king. Hey noble ones, today we're going to talk about The Woman King, a recently released film set in the 1820s in West Africa which tells us the story of the Agoji, a historically documented all-female warrior regiment belonging to the Kingdom of Dahomey, and their interactions with European colonizers, among other things. The film has been the centre of all sorts of controversy in the last few weeks, from Rot Tomatoes allegedly changing the score to a basically perfect score of 99%, but then when you go look at the actual reviews, you you see that out of like 260 reviews, 240 actually one line is with five stars, great movie, amazing actors, wonderful spamming of bots, to people on the other side of the spectrum spamming hashtags saying that the film should be boycotted. And I know what he was thinking, it's probably like white supremacists that won the film cancelled, right? Because of the mostly black cast. No, it's actually black people that are mad, and rightly so. Backlash from the black community against the Woman King. This movie, The Woman King. You know, like Hollywood has no damn, they have no soul anymore. So what happened? Well, let me tell you. There really is a lot to say about this film, from its premises to its failures. It might not be easy to encapsulate everything I've got to say in one single video, but essentially we're going to talk about two things. One, I'll tell you the reason for the controversy behind the film, including a few statements by Viola Davis, which I would define as utterly moronic. Two, I'll answer the question that you are most likely going to ask me if you are a subscriber to this channel. Is the movie a historically accurate depiction of the Kingdom of the Homie and the events that unfolded? As always, in order to do a professional job, we need to set aside our emotions and use logic and reason to assess and analyse the situation. The one thing that I can say right off the bat, which unfortunately is one of the very few good things I can say about this movie, is that at least it's a step in the right direction when it comes to the setting, or it would have been if they had done it right. What do I mean by that? If you've been following me for a while, you already know that I've been complaining for years about both the blackwashing of non-black historical characters and the whitewashing of non-white historical characters. In other words, I'm a huge supporter of the idea that history and historical characters should be represented with their own ethnicity and gender untouched, because they are, well, historical. And any form of infotainment that is based on real events and real characters, even though they can take some liberties when compared to a full-on documentary, they still have a responsibility because they have the power to inform or misinform, particularly when they say this. I think the reason why The Woman King is important is it because it's historical and it's real. Because it's historical and it's real. So don't cast a white actor to play Shaka Zulu and don't cast a black actor to play Charlemagne. So here's my question for you. How does that connect with the idea of representation, meaning the representation of ethnic minorities within the, say, demographics of the United States of America, which is where the majority of the content that we consume on a daily basis is produced? Well, representation has been a major concern in mainstream American production for a while now, and even though it may appear that they are trying to solve it in reality, in my opinion, they're doing it the wrong way. As I've said multiple times on this platform, representation is important, it should be addressed, it should be there. However, if you want more African-American, or African-African for that matter, actors to appear on screen, tell us about African kingdoms, African gods, African stories, African-American stories, African-British or whatever you stories. That's the right way to cast a black actor. We often say that in our day and age we now have the power to create media that is inclusive, and that is true, but we also need to remember that that means giving the people that create these movies and films control over the stories that define you. They have the power to tell other people who you are. So let's make sure they do it right. And this is the nutshell of the discussion. Do you want the stories that define black people to be white stories? In other words, do black people need white people to give them their story slash history? Hell no. Africa is full of history. Blackwashing a white historical character is a way big companies are masquerading their real thoughts and intentions. What this is really telling you is white stories are the only ones that matter. So okay, we'll cast a few black people since that's what's trending, but you gotta use white stories. It's insulting towards black people. And that is what this movie did right. That is the one thing that we should absolutely praise. Yes, they are casting a lot of black actors, but 
<laughs> it's set in Africa. They're telling us about black history, black stories, black historical characters. That's why I say it's a step in the right direction. I appreciate that, or I would have. But there is a massive however here. Now, did they do a good job? No. Because it's historical and it's real. Based on a true story. Well, we really need to talk about the word true here. So, too long didn't read version, the premise is great, the execution is horrible. It feels like this film script has been generated by an AI trying to make the highest money return possible of a current trend in the shallowest and most disconnected way possible. The film does get a few historical details right, we see Aoife divination, which was a nice touch, and I've got to say that as an action piece it's not bad, I mean the combat is fun but ultimately it wanted to be a crowd pleaser, and it failed, monumentally. Why? Well, dear writers and directors of the movie, because black people are not stupid. They know what you're all about. The reason why I think this film failed miserably, dear Viola Davis, regardless of how much money it actually ends up making, is because the film is not about the fidelity of the historical events. It never was. It's all about pushing a specific message and I'll show you what that message is. We'll expose it. But first, let's check out the film's plot. The Woman King. In the 1800s, a group of all-female warriors protects the African Kingdom of Dahomey with skills and fierceness unlike anything the world has ever seen. Faced with a new threat, General Naniska trains the next generation of recruits to fight against a foreign enemy that's determined to destroy their way of life. Now let me translate that from English to truthish. The film is all about the kingdom of Dahomey and its warriors who need to liberate this good black kingdom from the evil white Europeans who want to take away their freedom. An evil is coming. The good king of Dahomey, who is convinced by his strong women warriors that slavery is wrong, understands that they should stop slavery and start selling palm oil instead. Freedom, liberty against the oppressor. Slaving is wrong, slavery is wrong, strong women, great, no slavery, freedom mate, freedom. The reason of my facepalm is because this is as accurate a description of the Kingdom of the Homey, that specific king and the all-female warriors as a movie that shows the ancient Romans as being all about peace and love. It's as accurate as saying that imperial colonists were all about diversity and the defense of minorities. Because it's historical and it's real. It's historical in the loosest possible interpretation slash definition of the term. That in reality, the Kingdom of Dahomey was very, very much a main player, if not a major player, when it came to the slavery. In Africa, they were enslaving black people. The real story is a story of violence and black people enslaving other black people, and then selling them to the Europeans, both making profits and blood money through black people's suffering. The very brave women warriors we see depicted here as the anti-slavery strong emancipated women faction were historically the very force behind the collection of slaves in Africa, some being slaves themselves. This king was so much into slavery that he was nicknamed the Slave King. The very people that committed the slavery in this movie are represented as people who hate slavery and fight for freedom. Rewriting history or not wanting to talk about true history, here we have the Woman King that's coming out that is a complete and utter fabrication of history. Okay, they're always going out to the white man for his role in the transatlantic slave trade, but never has nothing to say about the Africans who were a vital part to the success of the Europeans with the transatlantic slave trade, as they were the ones they were rounding up the African slaves in the first place. The film is literally rewriting the villains as heroes because they have a certain skin color and gender. Goodness gracious, I can already imagine how the actual meeting where they were deciding the setting of this movie I can imagine how it went, and I'm losing IQ points because of it. Uh, hello sir, I'm here with a list of ideas for possible movies. Yeah, okay, time is money, you've got three minutes. 
we would like to talk about the kingdom of Dahomey. Kingdom of what? It's an African kingdom. African kingdom, I like that. Yeah, were they black? Uh, well, yes, sir, it's in Africa. Right. They had this interesting regiment of all women warriors. All women warriors? And they were black? Uh, yes, sir. That's cool. That's gonna sell. Were they fighting evil white people? Uh, yes, there were some encounters with the Europeans. Funded. Were they also very nice? Um, actually, they were slavers. You know, history tells us that they were taking a lot of black slaves, butchering people, beheading slaves. No, 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 no. Um, these are the good girls. These are the bad guys. Um, what's the name of that movie with Mel Gibson screaming at the end? Braveheart? Yeah, freedom. This is what this film is all about. Freedom. Um, your three minutes are up. So when it comes to script writing, here is what they're doing. They are creating two very definite monoliths. The good people with the good badass warriors who fight for freedom and liberty and the bad evil white European colonists. Now don't get me wrong, as a European I'm not saying that the white European colonists were nice people. There is bad everywhere. But this move is literally changing the facts completely to please their agenda. The mental gymnastics you have to go through to try and depict this as a movie about empowering black women, which is what they're doing, is Olympic level. The movie would have been interesting if they represented the facts and only romanticized them for entertainment value. They are uncomfortably, let me add, navigating around the truth. As distant as possible when it doesn't fit their agenda. You know what you call bending the truth and rewriting the facts to coincide with your message and ideas? Propaganda. And to add insult to injury, do you remember that I said at the beginning of the video that there is one statement from Viola Davis that I find to be rather moronic? Well, here it is. She publicly said that if you don't go and watch the movie, in fact, if you don't like the movie, then basically you're a misogynist and a racist. It's because you don't want to see black women in a leading role. That's why you don't like the movie, you naughty. This is why people don't like this movie, Viola. It has nothing to do with people hating the idea of a strong black woman in a leading role. It's because it's a historically completely inaccurate propaganda piece that you all are selling as historical. That's rewriting of history. Oh, you didn't like the movie? You must be a racist then. And misogynist. Any other ist we could add? Because my argument is so weak, all I can do is insult people. You're screaming misogyny at people who don't like historical misrepresentation. That is the definition of a misnomer. This is the wrong setting to talk about freedom, liberty, righteous defense of one's culture against the oppressor, strong, free black women that kick ass. We would have loved to still learn about this very intriguing all-female body regiment. But you had to add, oh, these are the good guys, uh, I mean, sorry, girls. They love freedom and hate slavery, while erasing anything that would make them look bad. There's a shit ton of stories right here in America that can encourage black women. We ain't gotta go to a dead tribe and, and, and find out that these dead tri this dead tribe was, was, was one of the key factors to the slave trade in the first place. Beautifully said. Now I'm going to tell you the real story of the Kingdom of Dahomey and its women warriors. Brace yourselves. In the 18th century, one of the principal business of European companies was dealing in slaves, whom they bought from local chieftains and transported to the Caribbean as well as the English colonies in North America. In return, they brought industrial products, including, as the most important product of all, firearms which were used in order to capture even more slaves. The Kingdom of Dahomey at that specific time was a semi-absolute kingdom which was moving towards a greater centralization. At the apex stood the king, whose position was sacred and in theory hereditary, although in reality the kingdom was constantly into endless civil wars. Now, the king was the owner of all the land. The bulk of the population consisted of peasants. It is historically true that the kings of Dahomey sometimes had women guarding their thrones and that they liked to display themselves surrounded by hundreds of serving women because it's historical and it's real. Including one who would kneel in front of the king while holding up a golden cup so that he might spit into it. The kings of Dahomey had personal harems of enslaved women and all of his nobles imitating him, setting up their own harems. They withdrew so many women forcefully from the population that low-class people were unable to marry and had to resort to prostitutes women were constantly put on parade as objects. 
There is this account in 1781 where the nearby kingdom of Oyo demanded the king of Lahomey to pay him tribute in the form of women, which by the way was very common. But since the king of Lahomey didn't want to give his own wives, he sent out officials to take forcefully other women away from his subjects in order to pay this tax. As you can imagine, the subjects didn't like that. The king was outraged, put himself at the head of a hunting party made up of 800 armed women, and the king used his women warriors to take women from his subjects as slaves. Then he actually defeated the king of Oyo, so he didn't even need to pay the tribute anymore. Wonderful! As you can see, they were the very opposite of a force against slavery for freedom. Because it's historical and it's real. As another thing they didn't say in this movie, I'd like to underline that the women who were chosen and entered the royal court, which at its peak contained about 8,000 people in the form of female slaves, they were reviewed by the king so he would decide their role, whether he would marry them or whether he would just use them as soldiers. Of course, they had no freedom in the matter. Also, all of the king's wives were forcefully circumcised. Another little detail. When the kings of Dahomey would die, they would round up hundreds of their women slaves and murder them so they would follow them in the afterlife. Another detail they didn't mention. Because it's historical and it's real. Now you know why this setting is the worst possible setting they could have ever chosen to try and push a message of black women emancipation and empowerment. This is why this film, technically speaking, sucks.